Hello, I'm Karak Ingar, and today I'm here to talk about something a little bit different today. I want to talk about the campfires and smoke signals that came out in the latest snapshot for the Village of Pillage update, and that is snapshot 19W02A. Okay, so real quick, here's the crafting recipe. It just takes three sticks in kind of a triangular pattern with either coal or charcoal in the middle, and then any type of log or strip log across the bottom, it doesn't matter. And so this is a really simple thing that you can build early on at the very beginning of the game. So how the campfire works is pretty simple. You place it down, it makes a very small amount of light. It only emits a light level of nine, which means that it's only really useful for keeping mobs from spawning in these three by three square area. So light wise, it doesn't do a whole lot. But you can right click on it with food in your hand and place down up to four pieces of food at a time. See, I can't place another one there. And it will very slowly cook the food and pop off while we keep talking. Uh, one thing I found interesting is if you want more light, you can actually place a light source underneath of it. And then the block, the campfire block itself is translucent. So that light will spread out through or past the block. All right, and you can see all of the cooked meat there is popping off. We got our four back. If you step on the campfire, it will actually hurt you, but I'm in creative mode right now, so of course it can't be hurt. And here we have a little setup with just dispensers so I can easily show this. This dispenser has a water bucket in it, so if I put out the water bucket, it waterlogs this block. And of course, that means it keeps flowing out in all directions. There's just a hill right there. And then pick back up the water. And now the campfire has been put out. And even though the campfire has been put out, I would still be taking damage right now if I was in survival mode. All right. And then this dispenser has a flint and steel in it. So you just hit the button and the flint and steel will relight the campfire for you. Also, campfires do not spread fire, so you don't have to worry about anything else catching on fire, and that will be really useful in a build that I'm going to show you later. And they also don't burn up items that are floating in the fire, like a regular fire would. So, that's another very useful thing, but it also prevents this from being used as a garbage disposal. But there's lots of talk about using the damaging effect in various farms to kill off mobs. So as you can see here, the campfire emits smoke particles. And these are a new kind of particle that they just kind of go up and then they dissipate. And they can be seen from a really long ways. So with a regular campfire, the smoke particles go up to about nine blocks. And then by that time, they're almost completely gone. If you put a hay block underneath of them, then the smoke actually goes up to about 24 blocks high, which is significantly higher and can be seen from a very long distance. So one way that you can use this feature is a lot of people make like dirt or cobblestone towers and they're generally referred to as noob towers. And this is just a way for people early on learning the map can find their way around, especially to like long distance things through the desert where it's hard can be hard to recognize the terrain features. So you can easily take a campfire with a hay bale under it. And as you can see, this can be seen from quite a ways. So not only is this an easier and faster way of making a noob tower, but it looks a whole lot better than just having these stone pillars up in the air. So another way of using these smoke particles is that they go up about nine blocks. But if you move the hay bale under them, they go up higher, which allows you to turn this into a smoke signal of some sort to mean whatever you want, really. I have a few examples of ways that you can use it. And there's two ways of releasing these smoke signals. You can either do something like this, where there's a sticky piston pushing hay block underneath of the uh, campfire in order to activate the higher smoke particles. And this is the most flexible way of doing it. It allows you to send out long signals or you could put it under there and then count to five and pull it back out and they'll send off just a short puff. 
And you can see that short puff right there and then the long signal right there. And everything else is disappearing. So that would actually allow you to send Morse code signals if you wanted to. And I thought about making a Morse code SOS machine, but decided not to just because I don't think most people know how to read Morse code that play Minecraft. I know I sure don't. I would have to look it up. But if that's something that people are interested in, let me know and I will definitely make that. So the other way is that I've got a trapdoor here and connected to it as a block with a button. And so the button will open and close the trapdoor when it gets pressed. When the trapdoor is closed, it builds up smoke there. And then when you hit the button, it releases it into a nice little puff of smoke. So that's a way that you can just send off smoke puff signals and maybe two signals means everything's okay. Three signals means that you're in trouble and need help. Could mean a lot of different things. Uh, one thing I want to point out is that there is black glass here. And if you don't have this trapdoor fully surrounded by glass, then the smoke particles will actually billow out around the sides and go up on their own. So you definitely want to fully enclose your, your little uh, smoke billow machine there. And while I was experimenting, I found a few interesting things. Even if you put a solid block that's completely encased around here, then if it's one block above the campfire, it will still let through almost all of the smoke. If there's one block of airspace in between, then it will actually capture most of the smoke, but it will still find its way through. And it's actually not counting whole blocks, but rather the distance that the smoke travels. So you can see that this trap door is just a little bit below this whole block, but yet it's letting through significantly more smoke than the solid block is. And it's not because it's a solid block but just because it's up so slightly higher. That's what, a whole three pixels higher. And that makes a huge difference. So if you go up and have a full block plus a trap door on the top of a block, that is enough to trap absolutely all the smoke, where just the trap door on the bottom or the top of the block above the fire will only capture part of the smoke. So. When you're designing your own smoke signals, this is definitely something that you want to be aware of and make sure that you have enough space there that you're capturing everything. So I couldn't make a campfire video without actually going and making myself a little camp. I just had to. So here we have a nice little camp. This would be a good little starter area. You've got your bed, some crafting tables, lots of chests to hide stuff in. But you see, this chest right here is just out in the open. I mean, anyone could walk up here and steal my redstone or my food or even my cobble and dirt. And that's no good. If someone's getting into your chest, you want to know about it. So what I did is I rigged it up that when someone gets into the chest, this campfire gets a bale under it. And that produces a longer line of smoke. You can see that was from when I just opened up the chest a moment ago. So this is actually a trap chest. So when they access it, it powers the redstone underneath of it. And then you'll see there that this new wave of smoke going up is going up way higher than the nine blocks that it would normally go. And it'll keep going there for a moment and then start dissipating again. So this gives you a nice signal, but someone who's in here rummaging around isn't really going to notice because they aren't going to be looking up and seeing Oh, hey, the campfire smoke is going up higher than it used to be. No, they're just going to completely miss that. Okay, so the redstone for this is super simple. The trap chest gives power to this block, which then is read by this redstone dust and passes down into this repeater. The repeater sends a power over into this comparator pulse extender. And when you're building this, having these blocks on the end really helps out with the amount of time that this extends the redstone signal for. So you definitely want to have those blocks there. And then that sends power into this repeater, which just makes sure that it has full power so it can reach the block as it's fading. So if we open it up real quick, you can see everything's powered. The comparator pulse extender is extending that signal significantly so that it gives a nice puff of smoke that you'll have time to see. And then there, the piston pulled the hay bale right back down. 
So this is really simple. It does require a little bit of uh, quartz in order to make the comparators. And along the same lines of using the smoke signal as a warning system, I built myself a little starter house here. And I've got myself a little blacksmith shop and a nice little house here that I was just kind of toying with the different ways of building a house and trying to make it not look too flat. So there's an iron door, which is pretty common on houses, and a button to open it up. You know, no one's going to think anything about it. And then on the way back out, you have this trap door so that it opens the door for you, and you don't have to press a button on the way out. That's all pretty common, and no one's going to worry about this. Plus, there's a good chance that they're not even going to see it because of the uh, oak slab on top of oak, or sorry, oak pressure plate on top of oak planks. So now I'm here inside the house. And if someone comes in here, I want to know because I don't want them stealing my emerald block carpet or my decorative uh, wither skeleton skull here or getting in the hanging of my chest because, you know, there's a little bit of storage hidden around here and I want to make sure that it's not stolen. So when you step in here, you walk in through the door and step on the pressure plate automatically. There's no way around it. And that pressure plate doesn't just open the door. It's also hooked up to a... Uh, piston that is not powering this one, but actually sinking a hay bale underneath a campfire that's all the way up here. And the reason why I did that was to give it additional height. So you can see the smoke is coming out, and that was the last puff from when I just stepped on a minute ago. And now uh, there's a new pillar of smoke coming up so that you can see that I just came out the front door. And the redstone behind this is also pretty simple, but a little bit more complex. So you can see, even with having the campfire up higher, the regular smoke isn't making it that far out of the chimney, because there's so many blocks to the chimney. So it's really helpful to have that extra height in there. And to do that, I actually padded out the wall by a block, so that this wall is two blocks thick. And that allowed me to hide the redstone inside of here. So I'm going to take you through how the redstone works real quick. You step on the pressure plate right above here, and that gives power to this redstone and powers this comparative pulse extender. I made this extender a little bit bigger than the other one so that it would provide a longer signal to, and therefore a longer puff of smoke. The comparative pulse extender comes out and powers this block which shuts off this torch, and this is a torch tower, a way of sending uh, redstone power up. And if we can right away inside right here, that turns on this torch right here. And when that turns on, that turns on this piston right here, which pushes the hay bale up against that campfire. So if I just manually do this real quick, uh, is there a way to manually do this? Let's go right there. Ha! Alright, if I just manually do that real quick, then you see the smoke is coming up a lot higher out of the chimney than it did just a moment ago. So this gives you a nice long distance thing that you can see. Because, I mean, look at that. That one over there, if I go just a little bit backward, you can still barely see that puff or that smoke signal right there, that campfire. And that is well over 100 blocks away. So you can see the particles from the campfires for the entire distance that is rendered or that the chunks are loaded in. So if you can see the world, you can see the campfire smoke. All right. So this will give you a nice ability to see from a distance that someone has broken into your house. And then here we have another use for the campfire. This one you have to actually activate yourself. And I kind of modeled this after a tower that I built in my very or my second world, but I just got lazy and wanted to get it done quick and didn't fully build up the tower, so it doesn't look as good. So here we've got the campfire on the floor, and it's building up smoke and getting caught here in this overhead piece. And if I press this button, it'll let through just a single puff of smoke. And this campfire does have a a hay bale underneath of it all the time. So it's just always putting out that higher smoke signal. And then if I flip this lever, you can see it opens up this trap door and just help, holds it open. So I can easily make a long line of signal that way. 
So I have the option of doing the puff or the whole line. And that really gives this one a lot of versatility, but it is one that you have to manually do yourself. It also has the advantage of the redstone is incredibly simple. It's just a whole block with a trap door on it, and another whole block, and then a lever and a button. So very simple. So over here I made another mock-up of the roof, and this one's a little bit more complex, but automated. So up here we have a hole in the floor with a trap door, and then half slabs just so that nothing can spawn up here. And then you press the button, and that activates the redstone underneath, which then produces just these puffs of smoke. And it's just going to keep on producing those puffs of smoke until I come over here and reset the system. So I just wait for that for a moment, and then flip it back off, and it's all reset. And the way that this works is that the... Actually, I might as well reactivate it real quick. Come on. So the button provides power to this redstone, which sends off into this one tick circuit or one tick pulse limiter. And that works by sending power into this block, which then powers this redstone comparator for a second. And then at the same time it's powering this block, it also powers this piston, which pushes up and that pushes this block out of the way, breaking the signal going here. So instead of having a full button length of signal, which kind of messes up the rest of the redstone, it's built in that it can handle any single length because it's going to automatically cut it off. And then from there, it sends power into this uh, this repeater pulse loop. And you can see the one tick signal passing through. When it hits this line, it powers this block, which powers a uh, piston underneath of here that sticks the hay bale underneath the campfire. So the power is going to keep on going through and around in this loop just over and over again until you reset the system which is where that lever came into play. That lever powers this redstone dust, which shuts off this torch and retracts this block. So let's go flip it real quick. And then when the power comes around through the signal, it hits right here, but the repeater doesn't have anything to send the signal on through because that block got moved out of the way. And so the signal just dies right there. So you just gotta hold it for a second and then Flip that back closed, and the system is reset. So I really like this setup because it's fully automated. Once I hit that button, it's just going to keep on producing puffs of smoke until I'm ready for it to stop, and it's also easy to reset the system. Another reason why I like it is because this top here is open, and that's one feature that I really liked about my tower when I built it in my second world, is that it had this open top feature, and it gave a really nice view of the town that it the tower was built in. And this version works great, it's very user friendly, but it does have the downside of you have this top hood here collecting everything, and that kind of makes it a little bit smaller and more enclosed in here. And this is actually two blocks high. You've got this block where all the redstone is, and if I can get out from underneath of there, then you've got stairs or slabs across the top of this. And that prevents any mobs from being able to spawn up here. Just like all of these are half slabs in the top half of the block. You can see the top of the stair there and then the half slab. So I hope you found all these campfire ideas helpful. And maybe you'll be able to use some of them in your own worlds and make nice pretty things or useful traps and farms. And if you liked this video, please leave a like. And if you really liked it, consider supporting the channel by following me and checking out my other videos. And until I see you next, have fun gaming. Bye.